the first part of this video is that I want to solve difficult problems, but I don't have the ability. The solution to that is either get the ability or get the money so you can pay someone with the ability to help solve the problem, right? And then the conundrum is that there's a time limit on when the solutions to these problems can be implemented. And then I guess the third part of the video would be that the problems are inherently unsolvable in nature. AI risk, biotech risk, climate change, biodiversity loss, autonomous weapons, these are problems that are so difficult to solve because of the way human beings are programmed to be competitive and to be accumulators. So if we acknowledge that there aren't clear solutions, the only other option is to you know, manage the potential catastrophe that they could cause and that there are a bunch of factors like mental health, like increased nationalism that make maintenance that much harder. This is a video for anyone that has huge ambitions, world-changing dreams and aspirations. This is a video meant for you because I'm in your shoes and I wish I kind of heard this earlier and that's still something I'm struggling with to really understand, but now that I understand that it's, I think it's fundamentally right that you know I can kind of follow this as a, as a philosophy. And the thesis is that there's a disconnect between the type of problems you want to work on, the type of you know problems you want to solve, and your skill level slash ability slash the resources you have to deploy to solve them. And I've created this graph um, that's sort of like a timeline of your life, but it also plots the feasibility and the impact of a bunch of different projects, you know, hypothetical projects you could work on. So on the high feasibility, low impact would be something like uh, be becoming a social media influencer or a email marketing person or a social media uh, marketing agency owner or something like that. You know, the people you see making making money online, uh, those, these type of videos. And then on the other hand are the, hopefully the person, the type of problems that you would want to solve if you're watching this video are the super high impact problems like, you know, AI security risk solutions. And, you know, I want to work on these really hard problems, but I have realized and have to have had to kind of be humbled by the fact that I just don't have the skills or the resources or the connections to really make any meaningful dent into solving these problems. So it'd be better for me to get to the money first get some connections first, and then I would be so much more equipped later on in my life to solve these problems. This is something like a form of effective altruism where we view money as an exponential resource where you can just do so much, either good or bad, when you've accumulated you know, these initials, these building blocks like money, attention, power, etc. But the problem is that we are coming up against planetary boundaries. So climate change is an example of a planetary boundary where basically there's a system and we've injected something into it, X, or we've removed something from it. And it can kind of sustain itself for some time. Like, you know, a person can live without, you know, an arm, but they can't live without like all of their internal organs. That's, you know, one way to think about this problem of uh, planetary boundaries. And we are like removing organ after, organ after organ from you know the planetary person and it seems like that's happening like now like as we speak now and so i have this like deep inner conflict that like the right thing to do would be to make a bunch of money first and then to go to sol and then go and solve these problems but also that there is no time that you know, climate change is happening now that ai is being developed at an unprecedented pace now that you know there's biotech risk and you know an unbelievable global discoordination happening all around us now so it's like this deep conflict between me not having the skill set and the money that i want to you know that i need to really help solve these problems and also the fact that there's like this timer on when the solutions for these problems can even be implemented to you know prevent uh the you know, cascade of catastrophic outcomes. So biodiversity loss, climate change, distributed biotech risk, AI risk, and autonomous weapons are all things that I just think are like super, super consequential. Like the effects of them are going to have this like long tail of consequences. And we just seem to be moving like super slow and discoordinated on solving them. And Daniel Schmachtenberger 
helps me think about these problems in a little bit of a clearer way. So we kind of could define all of those as consequences of the meta crisis and that the underlying drivers of all of these problems are, are somewhat similar. They're, it's like an interesting game we've decided to all play with each other, like globally. Um, so it's like races to the bottom, right? Like when we're developing weapons, we're developing weapons that are better than what we think the Chinese have or that we think the Russians have. And the Russians and the Chinese are playing that game. So we stack, 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 stack higher and create more and more powerful weapons or, you know, or tech, whatever. So these problems taken together can be considered as, you know, collective action problems, tragedy of the commons or races to the bottom. Um, and, you know, those are all somewhat different, but they're all similar in a way. It's it's a dysfunction of global coordination, but inherent in that is this is human nature. It's the competitive you know, resource resource scarce mind that we're all kind of programmed with. But at the level of tech that we've developed, implementing those type of games, these old world games, these competition, you know, competitive games are so catastrophic and it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to stop playing them. Like the financial game, right? This idea that we need to, this idea that we take money, that we borrow money, and you know we spend it now and that we'll pay it back you know, sometime in the future. We've created kind of like a hole for ourselves. That's what the national debt is. And now we need to keep meeting our interest payments year over year. And so now we can't stop producing. We can't slow down tech because that's directly opposed to everyone's greater good in this you know small game but it's p uh, it's a piece of this much larger puzzle and i don't know if there's ever been really truly great world leadership there are some people that have you know been considered that in the past but i think we're at such a time in history where global leadership is so important but i just don't even know if it's possible like there's just so much history. So there's a quote from Alex Ormosi that I really liked that might be applicable to this context. And it's that some problems have solutions that are like basically impossible. You just can't solve certain types of problems. So they're best to just be managed, right? Maybe that's like where the term, you know, resource management came in, something like that. But these problems might not actually have solutions. Like competition-based games are inherent to human nature, but we have tech that is so powerful that playing these games will likely kill us. So how do you solve that problem? It's like, it's impossible to solve, right? So you manage them, right? But managing them, manage them, managing them works on a small scale, like with people that you trust or, you know, I don't even know. I'm trying to say this coherently, but the scale we've reached now as this global civilization, there's so much distrust and also like, let alone the mental problems that I think all of us face, you know, whether that's like, you know, short term dopamine addiction um, or just like lack of trust for other people, lack of respect for other people, the isolation uh, that I think, you know, a lot of people experience. There are a lot of like different factors that make main that make maintenance of the status quo, which I guess could be called peace you know, in some parts of the world piece, extremely difficult. So it's just this conundrum, like there's a bunch. The first part of this video is that I want to solve difficult problems, but I don't have the ability. The, the solution to that is either get the ability or get the money so you can pay someone with the ability to help solve the problem, right? Then the conundrum is that there's a time limit on when these, solu on when these solutions to these problems can be implemented. And then I guess the third part of the video would be that the problems are inherently unsolvable in nature. AI risk, biotech risk, climate change, biodiversity loss, autonomous weapons, these are problems that are so difficult to solve because of inherent games human being play, because of the way human beings are programmed to be competitive and to be accumulators. So if we acknowledge that there aren't clear solutions, the only other option is to you know, manage the potential catastrophe that they could cause and that there are a bunch of factors like mental health, like, you know, increased nationalism, whatever, that make maintenance that much harder. So this video obviously didn't solve anything. 
it really was just an outlet for me to be able to think through this problem. So thanks for uh, bearing with me while I think through this. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys for all listening. So yeah, thanks for uh, bearing with me as I tried to piece some of these, you know, diverse thoughts together. I'm trying to form a coherent picture of the universe and it just seems like everything's happening so fast that I don't have time. So still trying to figure it out. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.